This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the X-Zone Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the x Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember, 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. And welcome back to the next one, uh, everyone. On Monday, September the 13th, in the third segment of our show, we invited Robert W. Morgan on. Uh, he's got a brand new book out. It's called Citizen Spy Vatican Cover-Up, The Mob, Money Laundering. And murder. All right, just listen to that title again that Robert and I discussed. His new book, Citizen Spy, Vatican Cover Up, The Mob, Money Laundering, and Murder. On Tuesday, September the 21st, the uh, papal scheme hit the fan. Headlines around the world read Money laundering probe sparks another Vatican scandal. Vatican bank official under investigation in money laundering case. Robert W. Morgan was talking about that eight days prior to it actually being in the news. Joining me now is Robert W. Morgan, the author of Citizen Spy, Vatican Cover-Up, The Mob, Money Laundering, and Murder. Robert, welcome back to the Exxon. Great having you with us. Thank you very much, sir. It's always a pleasure to be with you, Robert. What did you think when you woke up on September the 21st and those headlines were all over the news? I was laughing because uh, I've been trying to tell people this for many, many years. Nobody wanted to hear it. Nobody wanted to believe it. I finally found a publisher that would do it. And uh, bingo, uh, I happen to beat that, believe it or not, the books are on the shelf right now that tell the mm-hmm. entire story. So uh, but, uh, what, what is it? Yeah. Anyway, that's uh, that's where I stand, and it, I can't believe the synchronicity of that happening. But uh, anyone listening can get to Borders Books. That's where you're going to find it. Robert, stand by, bud. You and I have to take a commercial break. Thank you very much for coming back with us, Robert. Uh, it's great pleasure talking to you, as it always is. We'll talk more about Citizen Spy Vatican Cover-Up, The Mob, Money Laundering, and Murder with Robert W. Morgan, the author, on the other side of this commercial break. And Exo Nation, uh, like Robert said, the book is available at Borders. We'll be back on the other side of this break. Don't go away. Take a step back in time and discover old Florida cuisine at Marsh Landing Restaurant in Felsmere. Enjoy delicacies such as frog legs, gator tail, catfish, and swamp cabbage, or enjoy the more traditional cuisine like hand-cut Angus steaks, ribs, and seafood. Join us for breakfast with a southern flair featuring sweet potato pancakes, biscuits and gravy, and much more. Planning a party? Marsh Landing's private dining room can accommodate groups from 8 to 80 people. While you're visiting, enjoy the historic pictures, artifacts, and stories that line the walls. Marsh Landing is truly a unique experience. Marsh Landing Restaurant, 44 North Broadway in historic Felsmere, or visit marshlandingrestaurant.com. Marsh Landing, old Florida cuisine at its best. (laughs) 
Are you interested in the paranormal, ghosts, UFOs, or psychic phenomenon? Join me, Tim Bartley, co-host of Talking to Spirits with Lightworkers Tim and Justina, coming mid-January 2017 to the XZBN. We will channel spirits live and talk to them, revealing all kinds of amazing information. Spiritual attachments will be found and removed on the show, and so much more. To find out when you can listen to Talking to Spirits with Lightworkers Tim and Justina, visit www.xzbn.net for listeners on both sides of the veil. Welcome back, everyone. Robert W. Morgan is our special guest. We're talking about when Robert was on with us on Monday, September the 13th, talking about his new book, Citizen Spy, Vatican Cover-Up, The Mob, Money Laundering, and Murder. We talked about the bank and in the Vatican, Robert, and Tuesday, September the 21st, it was all over the, uh, over the news. Money laundering probe sparks another Vatican scandal. Welcome back, Robert. Oh, thank you very much. You know what, Rob? I'm, I'm especially pleased, to be honest with you, that uh, I made the announcement, and actually over your show, when we discussed uh, the book Citizen Spy. I, yours was the very first interview that I did, and I'm glad because you and I go back a long way, and your listeners um, should appreciate that you really are always at the razor's edge. God bless, pal. Oh, thank you very much, Robert. For the listeners who may not have been with us last um on the on the thirteenth, when you were talking to us about citizen spy Vatican cover up, can you can you tell us about the the information that you found pertaining to the money laundering? Well, you know, I didn't set out to, uh, as I explained in the book, I didn't set out. I had no idea where I was going. Mm-hmm. All I knew is there were there was drug dealing on my child's playground. That's all I knew. And uh, when I took one down, um, Frank Sturgis, the, uh, uh, who was convicted at the Watergate burglar, I happened to have a contract for his life story, and I was working with him. And he told me to just stay away, leave it alone. It was too big for me. But he dropped the bomb, and he said that, um, uh, the, for instance, the, mm-hmm. the big bag lady in Miami, Florida, always took a taxi, and the cops couldn't catch where she went because she kept hopping taxis. You never knew which direction she was going to go. Well, of all things, Rob, I was writing a proposal for a television series about a Cuban um, uh, refugee as a cab driver. And I don't know anything about cab driving, so the only thing I could do to know what in the heck I'm talking about is drive cab for a while. So I did. And uh, but I paid off the cab um, a dispatcher to make sure I was near the David William Hotel mm-hmm. in Miami, Florida. Actually, Coral Gables. Uh, and I indeed got that bag lady into my cab. And uh, I didn't let her switch uh, cabs. I got in the fast lane, and I accused her of being a spy from Hollywood, <laughs> trying to steal my ideas, stuff like that. And as a matter of fact, I took her right to the destination. So I did, in uh, within two weeks, what the Miami Police Department, uh, uh, Dade County Sheriff's Department, they couldn't do in six months. And uh, she and I became friends. And um, John Charles Piazza, who was the Mafia Don in, in that area, bringing the dope in uh, through uh, Cuba and then mm-hmm. uh, using the swarm boats, I ended up in a, in, in, in a short time, fairly short time, involved with them very deeply. Uh, especially when Piazza got uh, busted and they needed some help. Anyway, um, it's all in Citizen Spy, but well, I had no idea, Rob, where I was going with this. Uh, the mob uh, started uh, talking to me about uh, building a film studio for me uh, in Panama mm-hmm. under the Panamanian dictator Omar Torrijos, and uh, they were going to do that so I would make my films down there, but then they would purchase the film for $1.00 for the print to bring into the United States. That way they don't pay taxes. Hmm. And uh, then, yeah, oh, they, they, they're smart people, very intelligent. Then they would release the films here, and of course all the profit is, is in their pocket. So uh, anyway, I got in there, and the more I learned, and the more I learned. And uh, the way I got involved with this whole thing was they said that somebody was selling drugs on my kid's schoolyard. Well, I did what I think every parent should do. You know, you call the cops and they, they say, well, you know, we have too much on our plate baloney yeah. 
they don't seem to understand. They work for us, you know. And so I did what they what they couldn't or shall we say wouldn't do. And I think every parent should tell the police, you work for me. You don't tell me what to do. You follow the law. You do it. And you and if they don't do it, get a new police commissioner because that's who you vote for. Doesn't it say on the side of police cars uh, to serve and protect? Exactly. Serve and protect. They act like they're the Gestapo sometimes. They're not in charge. We are. You know, so long as we're following the law, of course. Exactly. Naturally. Exactly. Uh, so, so, Robert, with reference to the money laundering money aspect laundering. in the Vatican, because you, you, you outline it in your book, and, you know, you, you, you make ties to organized crime, and the Vatican's all, this is the second scandal to rock the Vatican in as, in as many weeks, because now the people are going to be putting the Pope under the, under the microscope, because he apparently knew of the, oh, how can I be politically correct with this one, uh, of, of, the, of, the, of the abuse children were suffering at the hands of members of clergy. But uh, I, I must say, uh, now I'm going to uh, slightly defend the Pope because I don't know what he mm-hmm. did or what he didn't know. Because um, uh, if he did know about the money laundering, that's one thing. Right. More than likely, he didn't, because the president of the bank is usually an archbishop. Uh, and uh, when I went after him, it was Archbishop Marcinkus, uh, Paul Marcinkus, and he uh, originated out of Cicero, Illinois. And Cicero, Illinois, in the United States, was at that time a hotbed of mafia. And he, he was slid in it, they bought his position in there, and he had a very slick way of doing it, and the Pope themselves had no way of knowing. However, Pope John Paul I, the Pope of 30 days, mm-hmm. he was a lot smarter than what they ever expected. When he ascended, he demanded the books from the Vatican Bank and also Banco Ambrosiano, which was another bank owned by the, by the um, um, Vatican. And he kept demanding and demanding and demanding, and they knew what he was going to do. Finally, the books were delivered to his chambers, and before midnight, he was dead. And they said, of course, it was a a heart attack. Of course. And he was buried without an autopsy. So Mm. uh, the the, the popes themselves may or may not know. Uh, So I'm not too sure I would accuse him until I find out. Uh, where all the chips lie. But either way, it is, they should have learned their lesson by, by that time. But when after Marcinkus was, um, uh, he holed up in the Vatican for, oh God, several years, and the FBI was always waiting. He never could step foot off the Vatican grounds. And finally, uh, they, they got all the information they needed. They allowed him to come back to the United States. That was a deal. He would testify, and he would be allowed to come back to the United States uh, still in his uh, frock or whatever you call it. Uh, they didn't uh, kick him out. They brought him back, and he went into retirement, obviously. Sure. And of all places, he ended up living in retirement within 30 miles of Joseph Bonanno, the cop of the Tutti Catti hmm. in the United States. And when he died, he's, he, he's buried not very far away from his his mentor. Something that we found was very interesting, Robert, when we started doing research for your interview today was that in the 1980s the bank the Vatican Bank also made headlines over its involvement in one of Italy's biggest fraud cases the collapse of Milan uh, Banco Ambrosio that you mentioned which lent more than 1 billion dollars to companies in Central America that existed mostly on paper yes yes and the interesting thing i got corrected the other day because oh. uh, I claimed uh, half a billion dollars in my book, mm-hmm. because that's what I knew about. Yeah. Uh, my FBI uh, pal, who is now retired, and he also operates new investigative services, he corrected me later. He said, you know, he says, I got in touch with some friends of mine, and he said, uh, the, it was over a billion, Bobby. I wow. said, you're kidding. And two days later, he called me, he said, my God, he said, um, uh, an old friend of mine from the State Department he said, Morgan, listen to this. It's not half a billion. It's not a billion. It's billions, plural. So my little book, uh, I mislead people. <laughs> they think half a billion dollars is a lot. Well, it was billions, plural. And I what, just learned that two days ago. When we're talking about the Vatican Bank, even 
a hundred thousand or even two hundred thousand or even fifty thousand that 's a lot of money because it 's my understanding, Rob, that all the money that the Vatican Bank holds is used to help around the world supposedly it, it, yeah and I, and I know for a fact, Robert, that uh, the Vatican is the world 's richest corporation because when you look at it in the world of finance, the Pope is the CEO. The cardinals are the board of directors, and everyone below that are shareholders. That's right. Yes, and you know, the, the American people, I think mm-hmm. of all the people, the poor people, oh. uh, who, who ties consistently to a church, yeah. wanting to, to show God how much they respect and how much they help them. And they're being ripped off. They're being lied to. Any, any church that can do things like this how can they ever represent a true loving god it's impossible and coming Maybe from you know family. coming from you i know that you you uh, you're uh, you you're into zen and and you're you're just a person who believes that you know do unto others it, well what you are yeah. is the way i look at it what i am now is what i have earned to be yeah. in previous times what i will become is what i do with what i have now Robert, stand by, buddy. We've got to take our break with the news. Exxon Nation, Robert W. Morgan is our special guest. Robert, give the Exxon Nation your website. Oh, www. Robert W. Morgan, all one word. Robert W. Morgan dash alive dot com. There you go. www. Robert W. Morgan dash alive dot com. Robert W. and I will be back on the other side of this commercial break with the news. As the Exxon continues with yours truly, Rob McConnell, on the other side of this break from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Don't go away. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the X-Zone Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the Exxon Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember, 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. Exo Nation, if you missed my interview with Robert W. Morgan on Monday, September the 13th, all you have to do is go to exonepodcast.com and go down to Monday, September the 13th and click on the uh, on Robert's um, line that we have. You can either listen to it on our RSS feed, or you can download it through our Apple iPod, and by the way, uh, Apple iTunes. And by the way, as of this past Wednesday, we've had over 500,000 downloads this year. And according to somebody I spoke to at Apple, they told me for every one download that comes down, two other people listen to that download, and there's no way of tracking how many downloads are passed from friend to friend to friend to friend. So... A, a a proper estimate of downloads, 1.5 million. It's not too bad for one year's work. And it's because of people like my guest this hour, Robert W. Morgan. We're talking about Robert's new book, Citizen Spy, Vatican Cover-Up, The Mob, Money Laundering, and Murder. His website is www.robertwmorgan-live.com, and his book's available at Borders. Robert, um, how has the local media been treating your story and, and your success and the 
and, and your book, Citizen Spy, and the way you're, you're blowing the cover off of something that many people believe should never be touched. <laughs> I don't know why. Truth is truth. Um, I, as a matter of fact, the Daily Interlake newspaper in Kalispell, Montana, start, spells with a K, uh, I hit the front page, a uh, photograph and all. And I have to tell anybody that, that downloads it, uh, I did what the photographer asked me to do. So um, I kept trying to smile. She said, this is not a funny subject. Mm -hmm. Oh, <laughs> anyway, uh, it's been plastered all over the place. I go down to my favorite place uh, for a beer or two. My God, they've got it on the freaking wall. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so, so I'm getting all kinds of uh, up here in Montana. The people are, are so sweet and so nice and kind. Mm -hmm. And I had one detractor, uh, not detractor, yeah, he made a comment at a bar. He says, here comes the snitch. I thought they were going to kill him. Uh, they, they explained to him uh, by Braille that a snitch is someone that's, uh, that snitches on their own to their own benefit. I was, a, uh, was an agent. I was involved. I did my job. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm very proud of what I did. So there's no snitching involved. This is going in. This is this is called intelligence and counterintelligence is what it goes down to. But anyways, there are people like that. What, what are you going to do? You know, you, God you bless know, them. Good luck to them. During World War II and during World War One and other conflicts around the world, when citizens help out, it's called resistance. Why is it when anyone, a citizen, joins law enforcement to counteract organized crime, which is a war, they're frowned upon. I, I, you know, I, I think that perhaps, this is just my opinion, mm -hmm. I think it's because when they look inside themselves, they realize they could have done the same damn thing, but they didn't have the guts. And so they strike out at those who did. And uh, that's what I look at it, but I don't really care. I mean, people with that small of a mind, why do, what do I care about what they're doing? You know, I don't care. When did you actually start writing Citizen Spy, Robert? Uh, you mean the actual book? Yes. Uh, I wrote the proposal uh, the day after I learned that Salvatore, Bill Bonanno, had died. And uh, it took uh, two years uh, to finish the book because I, I, I must confess, I agonized over every word. It had to be, I, I used self-hypnosis. <laughs> I did everything. And then finding a publisher with courage. Uh, so I'm very proud of, of uh of my publisher and what they've done. And, um, yeah, that's, it, it took a while, but I, I, I have to give up 99% of the credit of finding the publisher to my agent, Stephanie Dennis. And uh, Tidal Town, mm -hmm. uh, Tracy Ertle, the owner and publisher of Tidal Town Press, uh, she had the courage to do it. And my, my agent, uh, Stephanie Dennis, I, boy, I have nothing but admiration and applause for both of them. And right now, I'm working on um, uh, Secrets from the Sturgis Files. And this is the true story of what really happened um, at Watergate, mm -hmm. uh, what really happened on, um, with Ted Kennedy on Chappaquiddick Island. It's, it still has not been told truthfully. And I did find that, those things out, but I wanted to wait until, because I was involved in some of these things. I worked with Frank Sturgis for years in the anti-Castro Cuban movement. And uh, I, l I learned to separate facts and fiction uh, very quickly. I'm going to ask you something here, and if, you, if it's none of my business, just tell me, Robert, I won't be offended. Uh, the JFK assassination, was that related to the, the Cuban affair? Yes. It was. In, in many ways, yes, in many ways. Um, uh, JFK, uh, he did some rotten things, to be honest with you. The Bay of Pigs invasion was a setup, and he allowed it. If you look at the, at the um, statistics on the Bay of Pigs, these were the finest of the anti-Castro Cubans that had been forced out of Cuba. They wanted to go back and take their homeland back. They trained. They mm -hmm. did everything that we had asked them to do. But what was provided to them was second-class material, uh, second-class transportation. And the CIA did, did everything they were supposed to do. But if you look at the realities of it, here they are. They, they were put offshore with full battle gear at low tide uh, or at, at a comparatively high tide where they had to wade in nearly a half a mile, uh, which 
laid them wide open for, for being shot down, naturally. They were sitting the Cuban ducks. Air Force, yeah. or, they were yeah, sitting they ducks. Were sitting ducks. And uh, the Cuban Air Force came in and started tearing them up. The U.S. Navy launched sorties until John Fitzgerald Kennedy issued an order, and he said, the battle can't be won. And he pulled them back. And now came the Cuban Air Force, and they just slaughtered those guys. And here's the, here's the not-so-funny. The original date that was set for the invasion, if they had hit the beach then, there wasn't enough aviation fuel in Cuba to keep their air force in the, in the air for, le- for more than an hour. But there were two Russian tankers on their way from, from Africa uh, with the fuel. That two weeks period of time that Mr. Kennedy allowed them or uh, made them stand down, allowed that, uh, those two freighters, oil uh, uh, gas freighters, to get in and unload. Well, how could that be accidental? It can't be, especially, especially with the with the amount of intelligence uh, data that must have been going into the CS uh, the uh, the CIA as well as from the War Departments. Yes, yes, and I I met with a couple of the agents. One was a Mossad agent from mm-hmm. Israel. They uh, backed up all of what I just said. Uh, of course, there's nothing that can be done. Uh, JFK became a martyr uh, because he was shot. Uh, the questions now are why. And I think that when my book comes out, I think people are going to scratch their heads. And why is it important now, after all these years? It's important because the American people have been lied to so many times, so many times. And uh, it, it's time to set the record straight. Let's tell the truth. And uh, that's hard to do in Washington, D.C. That's why I don't live there anymore. <laughs> Lee Harvey Oswald, was he a member of the CIA? I... Truthfully, I don't know, because it's hard to find out uh, those things as to who was and who wasn't. But uh, from what I've been able to discern and what I've been able to learn so far, by accident and through Frank Sturgis, while he, there was a look, look-alike uh, uh, for Lee Harvey Oswald, when he said, I did not shoot the president, I think he was telling the truth. I lean that way because of the evidence that was provided by, uh, uh, oh, what was that? The fellow that owned the bar that they ended up uh, dying in Dallas. Jack Ruby? Jack Ruby. Jack Ruby swore up and down uh, uh, that, that, that uh, he didn't, that uh, the guy, the, the shooter, was not uh, Lee Harvey Oswald. And he wanted so badly, he pleaded, please get me out of Dallas. Please get me out. I'll testify before Congress. He pleaded with them. And uh, he'd been on heart medication for many years. By the wisdom of the prison doctor, they changed his medication and he died. But if, if he was so sure that Oswell was not the shooter, why did he shoot Oswell in the basement of the um, of the Dallas orders. police station? Orders. 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 Yeah. He, he got the orders from the mafia, and that was his job. And when they told him to do it, he had, you know, in the mafia, you don't say no. Yeah. They tell you to do something, you do it. Uh, otherwise, but he shot Lee Harvey Oswald because Lee Harvey Oswald, I think, could have proven it wasn't him. That's anyway. It's a long, involved web, mm-hmm. and it's almost impossible to to grasp. This is why I'm writing it very slowly, <laughs> very carefully, because I want to make sure I have all my ducks in a row. Because it flies in the face. It's just like my book right now. It flies in the face of of what the, the people, the public, has been fed. And I believe in standing up for the truth. What happened, happened. Let's find out the truth. Is and uh, after Jack did what he did, um, he was killed. Rob, I'm under the opinion that the Vatican is way too strong. It holds too much clout. I'm for the decentralization of the Vatican. Give, the, give what's in the Vatican to the people who really need it. The poor, the hungry, the sick, the homeless. The destitute. Exactly. Well, that's what it's supposed to be about. Um, but the, fun, the strange thing is, though, have you been to the Vatican, Rob? No, I haven't. I'm afraid of it falling on my head if I ever walked in there. <laughs> well, I, I took a, a nice long tour. I have never seen so much gold everywhere you look. Look at the robes these people wear. Mm-hmm. You know, these are men running around in dresses that are, are so... In, they, they, they're inlaid with pearls and, and all this stuff. Why? What does that have to do? Do you think that, that the God Almighty cares about gold? 
Come on. No, Only humans do that. You know, it makes no sense to me. And yet here's these people and I, you will find them. You watch, you'll see them. They will be crossing uh, across the, um, uh, the, the uh, and when they get in the Vatican, they will crawl on their knees, leaving blood behind. On, on the ground, trying to get to the Vatican and pray. They're praying for their souls. They're praying to the wrong people. Those people can't help them. And it's a shame. The Vatican needs to reform itself and be what it's supposed to be and sell all that gold and give yeah. it to the poor and the needy, the hungry, the deformed, and the retarded, those people that are, that are lesser blessed. That's where the money should go. Of course, what, what can I say? You know, it's, uh, I remember we did, a, we did a story, I believe it was last year, and... I think it was the Diocese of Boston that had over eight hundred and fifty million dollars in its in its bank. Mm-hmm. You know, it. And it's like there are homeless people in Boston. There are sick people in Boston. There are hungry people in Boston. People go to church and put tithings into the collection plate to help others, not to exemplify and adore those at the higher rankings within the church. I, I don't think that's what it's for anyway. Well, I'm, I, I, you know, the Catholic faith, uh, mm-hmm. like the Protestant faith, people have a right to, uh, to not only have their faith, mm-hmm. but to, to have it expressed. But these people are manipulating them, and they're, they're using the, the money for themselves. Like you said, $850 million. Why don't they use this money exactly as you said? And uh, they say, oh, well, we're doing this and this and this. No, 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 no. They should be as poor as the people that they're helping. And they're supposed to be funnels of the tithings to those people, to the needy people. But they're not. And I'm not attacking the, the concept of the church at all. No, of course not. I'm, uh, it's the application. And those that are running it now are not living up to um, their oath. They're not there. They're not there. And, and it's up to the Catholic people. Stand up on your hind legs and howl. You know, tell them, we want, we want this done correctly. We want to be able to walk in there and let it reflect the poor, not the diamonds, not the gold. Look at, look at the, uh, uh, the parades they have when somebody comes out and they, they, uh, they walk down the aisle and all the cardinals with all those hats. What do those things cost? And why are they necessary? They're not necessary. Here's an interesting uh, point, Robert, before we have to take our final break for this hour. Plaza Victoria in Montreal, which Montreal. holds the Montreal stock market or the stock exchange in Montreal, mm-hmm. is owned by a company that is owned by the Vatican. Oh, boy. There you go. Stand by, old friend. We've got to take our break. Exo Nation, Robert W. Morgan is my special guest. We had Robert on the show Monday, September the 13th. We were talking about his new book that's available at Borders. Citizen Spy, Vatican Cover-Up, The Mob, Money Laundering, and Murder. And then uh, there it was, Tuesday, September the 21st, eight days later. Headlines around the world read as follow. Money Laundering Probe Sparks Another Vatican Scandal. You heard it first here on the Exxon with our guest this hour, Robert W. Morgan. His website, www.robertwmorgan-live at, I'm sorry, dot com. Robert W. Morgan dash live dot com. Dash a live. A live. Dash a live. Instead of a dead, I guess. Robert W. Morgan and I will be back on the other side. Once again, that's www.robertwmorgan dash alive dot com. Hi, I'm Larry Lawson, host of Paranormal Stakeout. With over 36 years in law enforcement, I have learned a few things. The most important is the proper gathering and preservation of evidence is vital to putting the bad guy behind bars. It's no different in the world of paranormal investigation, whether it's the search for the afterlife, cryptozoology, UFOs, and extraterrestrials. How we gather the evidence, preserve that evidence, and present it to a jury of our peers will make the ultimate difference in proving the existence of worlds and entities that are beyond our imagination. Join me, Larry Lawson, every week on Paranormal Stakeout when, along with my guests, we'll take a journey to prove with indisputable evidence what man has struggled to believe for centuries. Go to xzbn.net for the broadcast schedule and check me out at paranormalstakeout.com.
True healing must address four levels, physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual, for us to live joyful and productive lives. We tend to treat three of the four, leaving the spiritual languishing. If you're tired of the same dysfunctional patterns cropping up in your life, soul balancing is for you. Trixie Phelps, owner and founder of Soul Balancing, is a naturally gifted energy healer trained in numerous esoteric forms, including shamanism. Trixie has created a powerful modality that safely and effectively clears your energetic field. A soul balancing session can remove interference, heal trauma, and restore your hope. Contact Trixie for a life-changing long-distance session today, www.soulbalancing.world. You're listening to the X-Zone Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. X-Zone Nation, I often wonder what would happen if Jesus Christ was to return. And, you know, he he pops up or he shows up at St. Peter's Square and he looks around. I'm sure that, or I believe, and it's my opinion, that he would not be amused. And... um, Just going back to the Vatican Bank for a second here. The Vatican Bank is a private bank that manages assets for religious orders and funds for the Catholic charities. It's estimated to hold assets worth more than $5 billion U.S. That's $5 billion U.S. Now, in this latest scandal, and of course we're talking about the money laundering, Italian authorities have seized $30 million from Vatican accounts and placed the bank's president and chief executives under investigation. The probe centers on two money transfers, $26 million to J.P. Morgan Frankfurt and $4 million to Italy's Banca del Funtino. J.P. Morgan Frankfurt. Hmm. I'm I'm wondering, Robert, is this the J.P. Morgan that I'm thinking it is? Oh, I'm sure it is. Uh, but, of course, he's he's dead and gone. It's just his organization yeah. left behind. Yeah. And don't look at me. <laughs> I'm a Morgan, but I'm not part of that group. Well, you're I R- from the Poe side. <laughs> mm-hmm. So you're the R.W., not the J.P. Yeah, and I, I came from the poor side of the family. <laughs> but anyway, Rob, yeah. Um, uh, May I may I applaud uh, not just you but your audience because these are the sort of folks that make a difference. Because by listening to you, it demonstrates that they care. They want to be informed. They don't want to be uh, not baloney. They want to know the mm-hmm. truth. And this is why I'm very careful what I say. And I know it sounds outrageous. It's just like if I would have said uh, two months ago about the money laundering in the bank at the Vatican Bank and announced it, no one would have believed it. I come out with a book, and on all things, and I had nothing to do with it. All of a sudden, now it's all over CNN and every place else, and also here, that indeed they are being indicted right now for the exact same thing that I have accused them of. Robert, do you think uh, that there is a possibility that your book actually played a part in this investigation? Perhaps in uh, not in the investigation because those ta- that takes months and years. Mm-hmm. But uh, could it have triggered the announcement? Yes, it, it could have. Yes, because they say, "Oh my God, somebody else broke the bubble. Somebody else, the Rob McConnell group, <laughs> came out and said this is what happened." And the book's on the shelf. The guy's standing there, and he's got proof, and he's backed up. Uh, yes, that that could very easily, I guess, could have uh, triggered uh, the announcement. So they're very careful with things like that. As always, my good friend, time just goes by so fast when you're with us, Robert. I want to thank you once again, and congratulations on Citizens by Vatican cover-up, the mob, money laundering, and murder. Tell our listeners where they can get it, Robert. Well, you can get it, uh, uh, especially um, in any of the, the major bookstores like Borders. You can get it. You can order it online, mm-hmm. um, the same thing, uh, from Title Town uh, Press. Uh, but the best place is, is to go to... Um, Go to uh, any of your uh, major bookstores. They they have access to it because it, it's easily available. And ask them to carry it. All right. And, and Robert's uh, website? Yep. What's your website, Robert? Uh, www.robertwmorgan, all one word, robertwmorgan-alive.com. And uh, you have questions, 
fire them off. I don't know how long it'll take me, but I'll try to answer. Robert, take care of yourself. Have a wonderful weekend. Really great talking to you, and thanks for joining us. My pleasure. Bye-bye. Robert W. Morgan, www.robertwmorgan-alive.com. I'll be back after the news. Don't go away.